if you just launched 3ds max and you want to do production renders first things first customize unit setup be sure you are using a real world unit do not use generic units always use a real unit I'm using US standard field with decimal inches American lighting units for lumens hit OK now you have real units in the render engine go to rendering and render setup and this little drop down that says assign renderer or this row out that says assign renderer be sure that your production render engine is set to either the mantle ray render engine or the iray render engine those two render engines are real world render engines that calculate the light bounces diffuses decays diffractions reflections all the funny things that a light does are calculated by these two render engines if you are using the default scanline render engine you are basically just doing previews so go to the mantle ray render engine once you have that set, you now have a real world render engine capable of simulating light. Next, if you're creating your scene, say you have a scene modeled, created, someone passed it on to you, and you're just creating renders of it if all you're doing is panning around and zooming and hitting render to create renders from your viewport we need to stop that and create a camera so if you go to the create menu hit cameras I'm going to create a target camera I'm going to hit T on my keyboard for the top viewport going to zoom out a little okay so now that I set my camera in my scene I can click on it then hit C if I have one camera it's going to go to the first camera if I have multiple cameras it's going to give me a list but now in my camera I can do the same thing and once I'm satisfied by the way things are going to look I recommend that you click on the camera name or the viewport name and then click on show save frame so you know exactly what the render is going to look like. If you like the way it looks, you can then start zooming and panning around in the perspective view and even add more cameras to get different views on things. So. Again guys, if you hit C with one camera, it defaults to the first one. If you have multiple cameras, you get a list, so don't worry about navigating. And you can also rename those cameras in the modify. You can give this camera a name, top corner, whatever you want. And now you can identify your cameras by name, which it also shows on the viewport what you have selected. The thing that's also cool about cameras is you can pick awesome stock lenses such as a 35 or 50 millimeter and get a different view of things with those lenses. Popular is also a 28 and 24. I'll go with the 24. So guys, so far we have units, the render engine, our viewport is now a camera and we can set it and forget it and render different cameras whenever we, we want and we also covered show safe frames which shows you exactly what is going to render and nothing more anything inside this yellow cutout is going to be in your render next our daylight systems and our lighting I'm going to create a plane so I have shadows
if you right click on any of these sliders it defaults to zero or it goes down to zero and that's what I'm doing so let me maximize this viewport and the create tab I can go to the systems button and create a daylight system I'll click yes to use the mental ray photographic exposure control then I just click and drag it prompts me to add a mental ray sky so I'll do that and the thing that's awesome about the daylight system is that when you click on setup you can tell the daylight system what location it's on such as Waco Texas what time of day it is now that you have the time of day you also notice you got the mental ray sun mental ray sky my viewport is set to realistic so I get a preview of what things are gonna look like with shadows if I go to shade it it just colors it in and now if you hit render the mental ray not mental ray the daylight system is an awesome way to quickly set up a awesome horizon sky photographic illumination you get the idea with the daylight system just throw it into any completed scene get the sun shining through a window or orient it and set the time to fall through that window at just the right location and hit render you're probably already destined to get an awesome looking render I mean what I got here is a purple box a plane and it's looking looking pretty good now just for show I'm going to set my render engine to the scanline render engine and show you guys what this looks like the scanline render engine looks horrible don't use it it does not calculate photometric lights to get the results that I got from the mental ray render engine in the scanline render engine I would have to do all kinds of funny things behind the curtains but the scanline render engine can be used for some post-production work which I will not get into so maybe later I uh, maybe later some other tutorial I'll show you what you can do in post-production with the scanline render engine so anyways um, quick recap I have units the render engine set up I have my viewport set up with cameras so I can remember different locations that I want rendered to get different shots I set up a daylight system to get awesome lighting in my scene and one thing you guys notice is that I have a purple box in a boring plane so let's add some materials to the scene if you hit the M key on your keyboard it brings up the material editor which in newer versions of 3ds max you get this late material editor I don't like it I got used to working with it but uh, I like working with the slate material I mean not the slate I like working with the compact material editor which let's do this if you click on arc and design depending on how yours is set up and specify a standard map all your materials at minimum must have a diffuse map diffuse maps can be anything such as a picture of a brick wall a picture of a of concrete the diffuse map is basically the color or the image that's going to get thrown out over your model specular maps are a specular map is something you need to look into I'm not gonna go into specular maps right now but 
later on you guys will need to be putting specular maps into your materials because they give you awesome effects especially with floors plastics sometimes different kinds of woods and then the last one is the bump map if you specify a bump map it gives you the option to give your material texture without having to add polygons so I can easily model this box with all kinds of texture but the polygon count is gonna go through the roof this bump map gives you a slight texture to things and now that I have a diffuse and bump map I'll click and drag or I can apply to the selection and if you notice I'm set to the realistic viewport but I don't see the materials in order for you to see materials in your viewport you have to click on this button right here to show material in the viewport now you'll often be hit with the scene in which you apply the material of say for example bricks and all you get is one huge brick on your object you can change this easily by slapping on a UVW map modifier whoops the UVW map modifier I'm going to set it to box and now you can adjust the size and the tiling of this map you just added so now if I hit render I have a textured box that has a diffuse map so guys just remember minimum diffuse map bump map and if you get used to and know how to use them add a specular map and then you can add all kinds of other maps as you get more and more advanced into working with 3ds max but minimum diffuse bump specular if you get into that so guys quick recap guys and girls we set units we set a render engine we created cameras to get awesome renders and see how things look like in different views we placed the daylight system so now we have an awesome horizon shadows real light in our scene I showed you guys how to use the show safe frames option for you to get an idea of what is going to actually render whenever you hit that button materials covered briefly diffuse bump and specular and we also learned what to do whenever you get oversized materials appearing in your viewport and then we learned how to show a material in the actual viewport which it doesn't do it by default you have to click this on every material so any questions comments you drop them find me on Twitter if you need help with anything just ask and I'll help you as best I can and I'll even be willing to do a remote session log me in team viewer but for now have a nice day questions comments just drop them I'll help out